Hey, this is Lyndon. Welcome to another boring, or I mean exciting, ActionVFX.com tutorial. In this episode, we'll look at the atmospheric smoke and fog elements you can get from the website. These can be great for a variety of different sceneries. Uh, fog has a number of different beneficial qualities that can really transform or enhance the look of your shot. And you can get away with using fog in just about any scene because fog is natural. I mean, that's like being able to composite explosions into any random scene because explosions look cool. But explosions don't exactly naturally occur everywhere. But fog... <laughs> fog can really enhance the visual appeal or professionalism of a shot while not looking out of place because um, fog fits in just about anywhere. Unlike explosions, even though explosions look really, really cool. Okay, we also have some volumetric light rays and fog, or any sort of atmospheric detail, certainly complements its presence. Well, allow me to very rudely interrupt myself. Uh, let's get started creating this shot. Alright, the first step would be to, I guess, grab your footage and drag it to a new composition. And now what we need to do is track this scene, right? Because we gotta track those fog elements into the shot, right? Because there's camera movement and that fog needs to follow that camera movement. So we'll right click and we'll do a 3D camera tracker, track camera. Or you can go over here to the tracker window and hit track camera. And we'll let this run through its analysis and see if it can determine the motion of the camera. All right, looks good. Now that the 3D camera tracker is finished, what we need to do is start creating mats for certain objects that may obscure the, the view of the fog, right? So there's some trees in the foreground, and they're obviously going to be covering the fog, or some will be covering some layers of fog. We're going to add a lot of depth to this, so we need to roto out some of the foreground elements, just like this tree up here in the front. So here's how we go about doing that. I won't cover all of these elements because there's pretty basic techniques involved, and I'm sure you guys want to get to the part of the tutorial where we uh, start compositing the fog, but I'll just run through this in case anyone might be a little bit confused. Alright, for this tree up close here, what I'll do is select some track points just like this, lasso some track points, right click, create solid and camera. So this is going to create a solid in the perfect 3D space along with a camera. So it should follow that tree perfectly, just like that. Good. What we can do is scale up this solid and then just kind of mask out where the tree is. Okay, do it just like that, and uh, to help it fit the edge better, we'll add a little bit of feather, and also it's a good idea to apply a roughen edges effect, and that's uh, more natural, more organic. So we'll just kind of adjust some of the settings, maybe bring that border down, and then bring some of the sharpness down. Okay, I think that looks great. We'll go ahead and name this Close Tree, and uh, we'll go ahead and do this for several other tree layers. I'll do an example of just one more. We'll select the footage, select the 3D camera tracker, and we'll select a few track points that are in the right spot in 3D space. So maybe these three will work nicely. We'll right click and do create solid, and uh, we'll try to scale this solid up. If you hold shift, it'll scale up 10 times faster, just like that. So we'll try to rotate this uh, appropriately. And uh, we'll go ahead and create a mask on this tree. Um, just along that edge. I found that's a good idea when you're making masks not just to click but also click and drag and it creates these tangents so you can kind of bend and curve along the edge of uh, whatever you're rotoing. Okay so you can see here I've gone through and created a uh, solid or a mask for each um, element or foreground object that I think is necessary for obscuring certain fog layers and things like that. It's not that hard, pretty easy once you've created a 3D track and a camera that follows the exact motion of the, the real life camera. And sometimes you will have to go through and add keyframes to your mask to be sure that you know the mask sticks just to the edge of the object that you are rotoing. Beyond that it's all actually pretty easy, except sometimes you have like a moving dynamic subject in the foreground that's not so easy to create a, a mat or roto for um, but it takes a little bit of time going through and do it carefully but once you have a clean precise mat like this especially for like you know the subject or the focus of the scene it can really help make the scene convincing. I've created all these masks and I want to pre-compose each of these um, layers individually so I want to have so I want to have one composition for each mat. So that means I have to duplicate this camera for each composition. So I'll duplicate the camera several times and I'll place one camera below each uh, mat. All right, so I'll select the layer and the camera that belongs to it. Right click, pre-compose, move all attributes in new composition, right? So I've got a pre-composition with uh, just that layer inside of it. 
Right, I'll do this for all the others. Just select the layer on the camera that goes to it. Precompose, move all attributes to new composition. And uh, what I'll do is put all of these compositions uh, and place them in a single folder called Rotos where I have all these different mats. Now it may be a bit confusing why I'm precomposing all of these mats. And it's a bit difficult to explain now. But you'll see towards the end of this tutorial, we're creating a beautiful setup for the way we're going to composite these atmospheric layers. So get ready to learn some awesome stuff because by the end of this tutorial, these techniques will have rocked your world. Oh, maybe. I don't know. Okay, let, let me show you a few of these different um, atmospheric fog elements here. They look pretty cool. This one's pretty turbulent like this one. This one's kind of a layered one. We have several just different um, unique fog elements that we're going to composite into the shot. Let's go ahead and drag them all in. We need to make these 3D layers so that they follow the camera movement. So for now, I'm going to put it on a blending mode of screen, so just uh, just so I can see what's going on. Okay, so we need to place these elements in the proper position in 3D space, so to follow the camera correctly. Um, and it's pretty straightforward how we go about doing that. Let's select the footage, select the 3D camera tracker, and then we'll lasso certain track points uh, to pinpoint the right position in 3D space. We'll do create null and this is going to create a null object that has the right position values in 3D space so that we can copy it, control C and paste it on one of these uh, fog elements. For now I'll do the side smoke and uh, we need to make this a 3D layer so we'll do this either by clicking the 3D icon or right clicking on the layer and selecting 3D layer. We copy the position from this track null and then we'll click P and paste the position on this 3D layered fog element. Let's scale it up because um, it's far too small. And let's move it in the right position just like that. Not looking great at all right now, but we certainly will make adjustments to this to make it look fantastic. All right, that's good for that layer. And we'll kind of repeat the same general steps to position all of these different fog layers. And, uh, and there's no predetermined way to do this. This is just the part where you be creative and place different fog elements in different positions to help your scene look good. So I'll go ahead and do that now through a time lapse. Alright, we have one kind of going up the hill down to the slope. We have another that's kind of up floating in the air. Doesn't look very good right now. We have another that's kind of up close and the ground near the camera. We also have another fog element down here at the bottom of this valley. Things are pretty chaotic right now. But we're going to cover some really, really cool techniques that I'm sure you guys are going to learn a few things on. You guys are going to really enjoy this. So let's go ahead and get started with those techniques. Here's how we're going to go about making this look cool. Let's uh, let's pick a specific fog layer. This one will solo by hitting that button. We'll right click, do pre-compose, and we're going to leave all the attributes. Hit OK. So basically nothing changed except for the fact that it created a composition with the footage inside. So we can double click on that composition and make whatever adjustments we want. And whatever adjustments we make in here will also be made in the uh, main composition. Alright, so I hope you guys get what's going on so far. Let's go ahead and go inside of this composition and start making those adjustments. Firstly, it can be a really big issue when we have the fog seeping beyond the edges of the frame. And believe me, this is an everyday problem with working with stock footage. So you guys should really enjoy and very commonly use the techniques I'm about to show you. But also often when you're using these stock footage elements, it may be situated in a way where you don't have to show these edges, where the edges aren't in the frame. But this situation is particularly difficult because of how wide the camera pans. It's hard not to show those edges. So in this particular case, we do need to fix that uh, sharp edge issue. And very commonly, you have to be using this technique. So let's get started with it. Let's create a black solid. And uh, what we're actually going to do is scale it up just a little bit, maybe 125. And we're going to do this for a reason. Let's select our rectangular masking tool and pretty much select the entire screen just like this. And we'll do subtract. From here, we'll turn the mask expansion down to about minus 200. And now what we can do is add some feather, about 300 pixels of feather. All right, so this does a decent job of fixing those edges. But sometimes it doesn't look very natural because it's too feathered. All right, over here we have some nice detail and roughness. But over here on these edges, it's too feathered. And there's actually a really, really cool way to fix this. Take note of this technique. So what I like to do is add a turbulent displace to the black solid layer. 
and uh, turn the complexity up to something like 8. Alright, so it's a really high complexity. And now we have that detail that we kind of seem to see along these edges. So let's kind of look at it before and after. Before it was like this, it was nice and feathered. And sometimes when things are too clean and feathered, you notice it. But when we add this turbulent displace, it adds some roughness and detail. And now it blends in more naturally. So usually I think it's a good idea not to subtract too much from these edges because you lose too much stock footage, alright? So it's okay just to leave a little bit of, you know, edge still showing. But it can be presented as an issue because once you composite multiple of these smoke layers together sometimes, um, that edge stands out and it's noticeable. So we technically do need to get rid of this edge, but how do we do that without subtracting so much of our stock footage, right? Because if we bring this expansion down all the way to there's absolutely no edge showing, it just subtracts way too much of our stock footage, and that's just no fun. So I'm going to show you guys a really cool technique about how you can... Um, how you can keep a lot of your stock footage in there while getting rid of that edge. What we'll do is we'll create another black solid. What I'll do is double click on this rectangular mask tool. I'll set the mask to subtract and uh, what I'm going to do here is turn the mask expansion down to about minus 75 and then feather it out 75 pixels. So this technically gets rid of any edge that was still there but we still get to keep a lot of our stock footage in there without uh, you know masking out too much of our stock footage so I was really glad to find this little trick or compromisation that allows us to keep a lot of our stock footage uh, while removing any signs of that edge and it still has a very natural look so this is really cool alright another thing that is very important that you must do is to animate the turbulent offset of this turbulent displace layer, right? If it's stationary, you'll notice the effects. It won't look good. So let's go ahead and just add a subtle animation to this turbulent offset. We'll add a keyframe there. We'll go forward in time and just kind of think about the general motion the fog is making. Just kind of animate it um, in that direction. Okay, what else can we do to this fog layer? Well, I've said this many times before. And uh, it's never a good idea to screen these type of elements like smoke, fog, dust, things like that. It's never a good idea to do screen because screen is an additive blending mode. Screen is for things like fire or explosions, things that um, brighten the scene. But fog's not meant to brighten the scene. It's meant to um, be its own translucent color. So instead of using the screen blending mode, we'll go in here and do something different. Let's create an adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is going to transform the brightness into transparency. Okay, may sound a bit strange now, but it's going to be really cool. Check this out. What we'll add is a shift channels effect. Apply this to that adjustment layer. Here where it says take alpha from, we'll choose take alpha from luminance. All right, so it's basically saying define the alpha channel by the luminance. So the luminance is defining the alpha. So you can see that thinned out the fog layer, and that's because um, it created transparency. But the problem is it's also getting darker as we go up to the darker sections of the footage and that shouldn't happen, it should only be getting more transparent. So we'll add a fill effect and uh, we can choose whatever color we want. We'll do about 75% brightness. Okay, so this fog layer is looking much better and now it's its own natural color. Um, but it's looking too flat It's because it's one solid color and that's not right. Um, we should be several different uh, colors because of the different lighting and shadows and things like that. So we're going to add some color variation to this. And this is also really important and useful when making adjustments to elements similar to these. So let's create another adjustment layer and we'll call this fractal noise. And you can probably guess what effect I'm about to add. The fractal noise effect. So something very important when you're adding fractal noise to objects that have transparency is to turn the blending mode to none and that allows the fractal noise to blend with transparency much better so try to remember that that's really helpful so we'll go ahead and scale up this fractal noise so it kind of blends with the detail of these edges that already exist so kind of scale it up so it matches there just like that we'll turn the complexity up a bit and also we do need to animate this fractal noise offset turbulence so we'll go to the beginning add a keyframe move to the end of the footage and just try to follow the general motion of uh, the fog Okay, it should be looking pretty sweet by now. I'll add a little bit of evolution. I'll do this with an expression. So I'll hold alternate, click the stopwatch. We'll type in time times 50. Okay, also I like to turn down the opacity of this fractal noise layer uh, so that the effect is not so harsh. So maybe something like 65 or 75. Okay, so we should be pretty much finished with the adjustments made to this fog layer. And you can see how well it's actually blending in now with that um, color variation in the fog and the transparency. It's actually looking really good so far. And it blends in naturally without causing that flat, um, unattractive look. 
Okay, so you can see I've made those adjustments to each individual atmospheric fog layer. Just as a recap, I'll go in here and show you what I did. And basically just add that, um, fix those edges like the same way we did before. Add that transparency and then add the brightness variation with that fractal noise with this adjustment layer. All right, so we did the same exact thing just with a different fog asset. All right, and we did this with all the other chosen fog layers. And you can see already it's looking so much better if we just turn on that footage. Those fog layers are blending in so naturally, and it looks really, really good. Um, I'm really impressed at this point. But uh, we really need to work on um, adding depth to the fog, make sure and make it behind some of these trees. So how are we going to go about doing that? Well, this is where the really cool way of compositing, that method of compositing I was talking about comes in. So before we do that, what we have to do is pre-compose each of these fog layers individually. Right? And so the same, we got to do the same thing, just make several duplicates of the camera because we need um, one camera per composition that we create. So we'll pre-compose this fog layer, move all attributes. Do the same for this one. All right, so here's what we have so far, and we're just about ready to begin the awesomeness. We have each individual matte layer precomposed in its own separate composition, as well as we have each individual fog layer precomposed in its own separate composition. Now let's turn off each of these um, matte layers. What we'll do is we'll add a set matte effect to one of these um, fog layers. So for now, we'll choose side fog. All right, we'll add a set matte effect to this fog layer. And you can see where it says take matte layer from. We'll choose one of these layers like close tree matte and you can see what it did. All right, so it took the matte from the tree layer but we wanna invert that because we do not want this um, fog layer to exist where that tree is. All right, so really cool, look what it did. It, it subtracted that fog layer where the tree is, where the tree matte layer was. And we can duplicate this set matte effect and uh, choose any other layer, for instance, the girl. All right, it looks cool. We can duplicate this again and maybe choose the hill. You can see how cool this is, like I'm excited. We've created this beautiful setup where we can just keep duplicating this um, set matte effect and just choose whatever layer we want. So this is like, you know, the compositing software Nuke. You're a lot more powerful with Nuke sometimes with compositing than you are with After Effects. Um, but with this technique with After Effects, it's like really powerful, like nearly as powerful as Nuke or something like that, so it's really good. So keep duplicating this effect, and maybe we'll choose the straight tree, which is this tree right here. And, uh, and if I don't want this to completely remove the fog layer from that section, what I can do is double click on this set matte effect, go down to compositing options, and turn down the effect opacity of this set matte effect, so maybe 50%. So now it only subtracts it 50% from this um, straight tree matte layer, right? So it's really cool, you can choose how much you want that matte to subtract the layer. So this is so much more powerful than like track mats because track mats so messy, so sloppy. You had to create a, you know, the mat for each individual fog layer. So this is just mind-blowingly more powerful than like track mats or anything like that. And then we'll continue doing this with um with these other fog layers, all right? We just add that set mat effect to the uh, fog layer. We're, we're doing this hill fog layer right here. We'll make sure and um, choose invert mat because we want it to exist um, where the mat does not exist, right? So we'll choose like um, hill for one of the mats, and then we can duplicate this and maybe choose a few more, maybe like the girl. And I just want to show you guys how easy it is maybe to add like another fog element. Like over here, there's not really a fog element over here. And if I just paste in one of those fog elements that we already created. And uh, what I can do is just position this just where I want it. And uh, basically what I do is make sure I have a copy of that camera. Make a duplicate of that camera. And drag it up here with that fog layer. Precompose them together. And uh, I'll add a set matte effect to this. And choose whatever layer I want. Okay, so we've pretty much finished with all this fog. I want to turn on a grade layer so we can kind of see the final result better. You can see this is looking really good. I don't know about you, but I am really impressed with the way this you know turned out. I think we can all agree that the fog really does add some life to the scene and add some depth, some detail, beauty to the scene. So you can see in the original example, we have some light rays. And these look pretty realistic because um, the, there's fog in these light rays, right? And, and I guess physically that's accurate because, you know, what causes a light ray is 
when you know a light beam hits some kind of substance in the air like dust or even fog and reflects the light beam to your eye and makes the light beam visible. And so that's why these light rays look more realistic is because of the uh, atmospheric detail. So I'll try to create this at a moderately fast pace. What I'll go ahead and do is drag in these light rays that I've already created and uh, screen them on our footage. They look pretty cool but they're not very realistic right now and we're going to add some fog to these light rays. So what you need to do is kind of mix a whole bunch of different fog elements together to create something like this, all right? So we just mix a number of fog elements together. And uh, what we'll do is drag this into the composition. We're going to use this as the texture for the light rays. So first we'll position it in 3D space, right? So we'll make it a 3D layer, go to the 3D camera tracker and just lasso some points to create a null object in the right spot in 3D space. We'll copy the position, hit Control C and uh, paste it on that fog layer. All right, looking good, looking good, but there can be some problems like these edges. All right, so this, especially like this scene, I was saying it's pretty difficult how I mean, it pans so far horizontally. And that can be a problem because of these edges. So there's a pretty cool way to fix this. I'm going to show you guys something pretty amazing. We'll pre-compose this fog layer and leave all attributes. Okay, we'll go inside of here. And what we're going to do is make this uh, seamless or make so we can tile it. And this is a really cool technique. You guys are going to love this. Check this out. I had to use a little bit of brain power to figure out this uh, technique. So we'll add an offset effect. And uh, we'll change the shift center to 0, 0. And uh, what I'll do is double click on this rectangular mask tool. Select the footage and double click on that rectangular mask tool. I'll go down here to the mask expansion, bring it down just like that. So something pretty cool happens. And basically what's going on is um, the mask applies before the offset. And then the offset comes in and, and creates that effect. And basically what we're doing is taking out those edges. So we'll add some feather to this. Minus 150 pixels of expansion. And then do 150 pixels of feather. So now what we're going to do is duplicate this layer. And we're going to change the offset of the bottom layer. And you can kind of see what this is going to do. Really cool. Really cool. All right, check that out. Now we've got some gaps here, and what we're going to do is just duplicate this layer once more, remove that mask from the bottom one, and then take off this offset effect. Boom, we got it completely fixed. There we go. So now if we add an adjustment layer above this, we'll go to the offset and set this back to the way it was. And now we have this seamless fog layer. It's really cool. It's just like the first one, except we just made adjustments to these edges so that it's now seamless. So that's really cool. All right, we can go back to our main composition. And what this allows us to do is uh, add a motion tile effect. Unlike usual, do not select the mirror edges tool and just expand this output width and height. Check that out. It's completely seamless now. We can extend this as far as we want. Okay, so awesome. All right, so now we just need to apply this fractal noise to the light rays. And the way we'll do this is uh, toggle switches till you see this track mat. And what we'll do is use a uh, luma mat. So it's only going to exist in the uh, bright spots of these light rays. And it's not very visible right now. I'm going to go ahead and solo it so we can see what's going on. What I'll do is add a levels effect to these light rays and just kind of squeeze it till it brightens up just like that. And uh, for this, I'm going to brighten this with a levels effect as well. Just squeeze that down. Yeah, there we go. So make these light rays visible. Okay, there's some pretty significant issues. The first issue is that there's actually darkening spots in these light rays, and that's not right. Uh, we'll do the same technique. We won't do a screen blending mode. We'll do the same technique as we used before, just adding a shift channels. I'm going to take alpha from luminance, fill this in with a color. I hope you're not confused, but these are the same techniques we've learned earlier on in the tutorial. And uh, if you feel that certain spots are too dark because of that fog texture, what you can do is go to the levels effect here on the fog layer and bring up the blacks just like that. So you're completely free with how visible and the contrast and different things with this. So play around with that, get it lit just like you want. But in the end, we have some really cool looking light rays. And uh, we definitely did some pretty darn cool techniques to create this whole scene. All right, it's been awesome. Ooh, all right, we, my friends, have just covered a lot of ground. Showed you guys some of my raddest compositing techniques. Be sure to comment, let us know what you thought about this tutorial. I hope this video gave you guys some insight on how you can dramatically improve your shots with atmospheric stock footage. So glad you guys decided to go through this tutorial with me. It's been so fun. Check out the website, actionvfx.com. Download all the awesome free stuff. Put it to use. Improve those shots. All right, I suppose that's all for this episode. Look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Thank you.